monitor calibration is something you've probably heard me bang on about rather a lot and I know a lot of you have got in touch and asked me to explain why it's important and what it's all about. Colour profiling sounds kind of scary doesn't it but in reality it's actually just a few clicks and a little bit of software. Why is it important? Well, have you ever stood in front of the TV shop window and the lunchtime news is on, say, 10 different tellies? Each one of those looks slightly different. That one's a bit blue, that's a bit yellow, that's a bit green, that's a bit dark. Same with monitors, unless they're calibrated to an industry standard. By that I mean all the colours you can imagine, all the billions of colours, they, they have content. There is an industry standard for each one and if your monitor doesn't conform to that, then how on earth are you going to know that the colours you're seeing are correct? If you wanted to put pictures into an image library and your monitor is displaying, let's say, pink, you either don't notice it because your brain colour corrects or you think you've maybe got a bit of a pink problem going on with your camera. You colour correct it on your computer by adding a bit of cyan and maybe a bit of green. You send it off to your photo library who maybe will reject your picture because on their calibrated equipment, it will appear as a cyan -y green colour. Same if you go to the printers. What your print will look like when it comes back from them is cyan -y green. It won't match your monitor and you will complain to the printer. It's not the printer's fault, it's because your monitor isn't the same colour as the rest of the industry. So how do we go about calibrating a monitor? Well, the first thing to do is to look at the environment you're working in because you need to make it neutral. The colour in here is a very sort of flat neutral colour. There are no loud reds or blues or anything like that which could affect the colour of the light in the room and then make my brain think I'm seeing a different colour color on my monitor. You're probably saying but Mike there's a big yellow splodge right behind you. That's not the colour of the room, that's this desk lamp. This desk lamp produces, it leaks yellow light so it's absolutely hopeless and when colour profiling or working with accurate colours I switch it off. <clears throat> The light in the room now is coming from one of my studio lights. This thing up here is balanced at 6,500 Kelvin. It's actually a video light, but I know the color from it is neutral and it's a daylight balanced bulb. Now you might not want to buy a studio light, but you can go online, look for daylight balanced bulbs. You could stick it in a desk lamp or something and, and shine it against a bit of white card or a white or plain colored wall. The other thing is the window. The blinds are closed. That's because I don't want daylight coming in here because daylight levels change. If the sun's going in and out, <clears throat> the light levels in the room are changing. The room's getting brighter and as it does that my pupils get smaller to counteract it. But the monitor isn't getting brighter along with the rest of the room. It's staying exactly the same. It has the effect of making the monitor appear dark to me. And so I compensate <clears throat> by brightening up any pictures that I'm working on. This is really notable if you do something like a wedding. If you've got 300 images and the light level is changing in the room all the time you're doing it, you'll find there's a block of really bright ones and then a block of dark ones when the sun's gone in and another block of bright ones when it came out. So make sure the light level in the room stays constant. I know I'm pretty anal about this, but then I'm doing it for a living. It's whatever degree you want to take it to. So what's the first step in actually calibrating your monitor? Well you need a bit of software, you need a bit of hardware, it's called a monitor spider. I've got one lying around here. This one is the Spider Pro 2. It's probably three or four years old and the reason I'm using this as opposed to a brand spanking new one is I expect several of you have got one or if you haven't you can find one on eBay really relatively cheaply. If you want to buy the latest and greatest great because I expect you'll find the software is a bit easier to use but the principles the same and what I want to get across is why it's important. So we've got our yellowy light turned off we're in daylight balanced kind of light the doors closed because I don't want light spilling in from the other room or anything like that. First thing I do is I take a little piece of tissue paper and I just very gently wipe any dust off the monitor. Something else I do is go absolutely berserk if anyone starts putting their finger on my monitor. I don't want smeary marks, one because I find it annoying and two because it's just dirt on the monitor. I want to see everything nice and clean. <clears throat> Good. Now <clears throat> let's first of all plug in our monitor spider. It's just a USB. Once you've installed the software it's ready to race really. There we go, little bing bong. I don't know if you heard it. 
when we launch the software, the software is going to ask questions and ask me to possibly make adjustments to my monitor. Now this is important, you're adjusting the monitor, not the computer. I've got a torch here to show you what I mean. Now, <clears throat> along the bottom here, there are buttons on this monitor and on this one. The way I have my setup is I have two monitors. This one I use for tool palettes. I have my windows boxes and things like that on there, leaving this monitor free in Photoshop for me to work on. So I've got a nice, big, clean, uncluttered space. That's a 50 quid monitor. That's a 700 pound monitor. It doesn't matter the cost of your monitor. If it's more expensive, it will give you more options, but don't worry, you can still calibrate. <clears throat> Any changes you're gonna make, are in the menu of the monitor. When I press the menu button, I get this little box down here with all the different monitor controls. For example, these are the picture controls. I can alter the brightness, the contrast. These are the different color balances. You notice there are Kelvin presets, 6,500 degrees is thought of as white, as daylight. There are user presets where I can tell the computer to change the content of the different color guns. Sorry, not the computer, the monitor to change the content of the different color guns. Don't go into meltdown with all this because most of it you don't need. In fact, I'm gonna show you. So let's launch the software first. <coughs> now, first off, you're gonna get a wizard, something which is gonna ask you to set up the software according to the controls you have on your monitor. Let's have a quick look, so next. It talks you through it. This is all information about what's going on and what you need to do. Just, just follow what your specific spider and monitor software tell you to do. I've already told this that I have an LCD monitor that I want to use a white point of 6,500 Kelvin because that's kind of an industry standard for where white lives. So I'm gonna say continue with these settings. If you want, you can go back. Actually, let's do it, let's just change the settings. There we go. It's asked me, am I an LCD or a CRT? This is an LCD monitor. It's saying, <clears throat> what is your target white point? And all the information is there. And if you need help, you click down there and here we go. It explains it all for you. I'm using 6,500 Kelvin and something called a 2.2 gamma. Windows is 2.2, Mac is 1.8. I'm not saying any more about that. Click next, <clears throat> it's now saying, right, LCD, 6,500 Kelvin, 2.2 gamma. Click next. Now it's asking me, do I have brightness controls, contrast controls, or backlight controls? Brightness and backlight are very, very similar things. I'll t I'm just gonna show you how you find out. You press your menu button to bring the menu up. You then go into the brightness control, <clears throat> and you can brighten it. Now look, as I push the brightness level up, can you see my monitor is getting brighter, but the little box of tools is staying exactly the same. What that means is that I have a backlight control. Let's just put it back to 50%. 48, 49, 50, there we go. <clears throat> So I tick the little tick box that says backlight control and I have contrast controls there, just here. That's that little thing there. Move on to the next stage. Since this display has backlight contrast controls, it's very important the controls are set to their factory default settings. I've already done it, but all you do is you go into your menu and you go along until you find factory default and press set. There you go job done. If I wanted to, I could tell it I have Kelvin presets and sliders, but I, to be honest with you, I find I get a better result letting the software get on with it rather than letting me fiddle with it, which suits me down to the ground. Go next. You may have seen the screen color change very slightly then. That's because it's just discarded the old color profile and we're back to the monitor as standard. It will ask you a few things. Can you see the the, the different tones in, in the grayscale there. If you can't, it might ask you to change it. I advise you to leave it alone. Certainly that's what I do. Next, it's asking me about RGB sliders that I mentioned, Kelvin sliders. I'm saying I've got a Kelvin preset because I have, I use 6,500 Kelvin, such as that. Now we get to the exciting bit. You see, we've got a little thing on the screen saying you can put your spider on here. So there's a little counterweight 
I literally hang it over the back of the monitor and dangle it down onto the screen. So that is touching the front of the screen. There's one last piece of this puzzle. <coughs> when working with colour, an accurate image manipulation, I use one of these. It's called a monitor hood. It's just like a lens hood on your camera or going like that over your eyes. I don't want stray light in the room glancing off the screen because it will affect how I see it. It will reduce the contrast of the monitor. This is just held on with Velcro. You can buy them. Have a look online, monitor hood. I just literally pop that on there, give it a squeeze. Now my monitor is beautifully shaded. I'm looking down a tunnel at it. Next part of the thing, I've got my spider in place. I click continue and it says put your spider in place. I've already done it. We're off. <clears throat> it's initializing the sensor. What's happening now is the software is firing different tones at the sensor. <clears throat> the sensor is reading those tones, comparing the information that it has in its database in the software to what the monitor is actually producing. When it's finished doing this, and it takes a little while, it will then take the two pieces of information, what it knows it's producing and what it knows it should be. It makes like a little digital filter which sits between the graphics card of your computer and the monitor and it just filters out all the impurities. How cool is that? And then your monitor is exactly the right colour. But all we can do now is wait while it gets on with it. There we go, we've reached the end. It even tells me I can remove the spider. So I'm gonna lift the spider out from there, like that. There we go. I'm gonna keep my shade on though. Move the webcam out the way. Click next. And it's gonna ask me, do I wanna give it a name? Well, I do, because I wanna give it the date. And today's date is the blind pew. I think it's the 10th, 10th of January, no, February, 2011. There we go, that dates the film, doesn't it? The reason I use the date is because you do have to regularly calibrate. This isn't something you just do once and forget all about. You need to do it every so often. The more costly your monitor is, chances are the longer it will go. This monitor will go actually probably three months or more before it needs doing. But I'm not suggesting you need to spend that kind of money. If you've got a, a, a less expensive monitor, say for 100 quid or so, you might just need to check it once a month. It's well worth doing. The software will warn you at the intervals you want. Now, next, this is the interesting bit. You see we've got a nice picture. It's kind of, this, is, this is a test image of all sorts of different colours and tones. And it's going to give us a before and after. Now, this is after calibration. Now, if I switch it to before, look at the difference. <clears throat> and this is also a great way for you to realise how your eyes lie to you. If I stare at the before one, which is actually wrong for long enough, and then switch it to the calibrated accurate one, the calibrated accurate one will look wrong. It's like putting on a pair of, say, yellow glasses. After you've been wearing them for 10 minutes, everything looks normal because your brain's filtered it out. <clears throat> Always trust your software. Click next, and it says, do you want to quit? Quit, next, job done, monitor calibrated, lovely pretty pictures.